Sometimes I can't help but get angry just thinking of Jeremy. You should have seen him back in the sandstorm. I suggested we go east, and he argued that we should go west. You were in a sandstorm? What happened after that? We separated and each went our own way. Lucky for us, we stumbled across this domain. Otherwise, I'm sure we would have been buried in the sand. <sighs> Everything will get better once we get the switcher working again. Hmm. Still stuck here just as I expected. Well, did you make any progress? Didn't I already tell you? Just have the Hydroidolans fix the junction and then make a new cart. After that, we can use the junction to... Wait a minute, how did you get here? It took a lot of effort for me to climb all the way up here. The answer is standing right in front of you. Huh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Those travelers must have helped you. You never get anything done on your own. You always get someone else's help and then try to take the credit for yourself. You're one to talk. What have you managed to accomplish, huh? You were here just moping around all day. Oh, they started arguing the moment they saw each other. But aren't they supposed to be brothers? <laughs> Me? His brother? <laughs> Hardly. <sighs> <sighs> all right, Jeremy. That's enough. Oh, fine. I'd rather be focusing my efforts on fixing the track switch rather than arguing anyway. You should calm down too, Ferdinand. Let's all focus on the situation at hand. Any personal problems can be settled later. Fine. I'm sorry you had to see that. My name's Jeremy. I'm one of the people responsible for taking care of this area. I assume you're the ones who helped repair the tracks. Thank you very much. It means a lot. No need to thank us. We're just trying to help Idea restore the domain. I see. Now that you and Ferdinand brought the cart up here, we'll need the Hydroidolans to fix the area below. Them again, huh? Seems the Hydroidolans are really important around this place. Yes, of course. Not only do they keep the junction turning, they operate practically everything else in the domain, too. Seems most of the tracks and junctions have been repaired now. Yep. So maybe it's time you give credit where credit is due, hmm? What? You think you deserve the credit? If anything, we should be thanking these travelers. Uh, you... Well, either way, you're not the one getting any credit. You're always quick to criticize my ideas and push your own, but you never actually get anything done. And what about you? Don't forget it was Hado and I who took care of the mess that one time you impulsively tried one of your brilliant ideas. Uh, speaking of Hado, wasn't he with you? I left early this morning. I assumed he'd be with you. Seriously? Couldn't you have at least looked to see where he was before you left? Hey, come on! You didn't see him either, so what's your excuse? Clee? Oh. Oh. I don't get it. Nobody did anything bad. Why are they arguing? I... Uh, I just don't like his smug attitude, that's all. Who are you calling smug? If anything, you're the one who's making such a big fuss right now. All right, I think we've heard enough from you two. If you insist on bickering, then I'd suggest you go somewhere else. Otherwise, I'll just cool you two off myself. Uh... 
Now, come with me. I'd like to have a word with you. Phew. Don't be upset, Klee. There are many complicated situations in this world which don't always have a logical explanation. As a passing traveler here, it's not my place to comment on their disputes. But in my experience, family issues can be the toughest to resolve. Seems you don't like dealing with this kind of thing either, Kokomi. But it's still not right. I don't know how to explain my feelings. I'm sorry. We've calmed down. You shouldn't argue in front of a child like that. We're sorry, Klee. It's okay. Back to the topic at hand. Weren't you about to go look for your brother, Hado? Ah, right. Our best guess is he's somewhere around the Torrential Twister. We would have to use the junction to send a cart to another area. Sorry to trouble you again, but would you help us find him? Oh, um, all right. Hey, come on, you two. You're brothers after all. Can't you try to get along? This is the end of this track segment. Otto should be nearby. treasures are a cause for great happiness. Ah, I guess you had repaired the tracks and stations as soon as I saw a cart come zipping along. <coughs> now that the tracks, station, and carts are all repaired, we're about ready to reopen Torrential Twister. It will be good to see my design back in action again. <sighs> You're in no condition to be out running around like this, Hado. <laughs> yeah, but these are unusual circumstances. <coughs> That's true, but you should stop to think things through. Exactly. If there's anything that needs to be done, you can just let Ferdinand and I take care of it. <laughs> you and Ferdinand? Together? It would be a miracle for you two to do anything together without fighting. Hey! That's between Jeremy and me. No need to add fuel to the fire, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to make trouble. I'm just saying. <coughs> hey, Ferdinand? Oh, uh, don't worry. We're not arguing, Klee. We're just, uh, discussing some things. Are you and Jeremy worried about Hado? Hmm? Why don't you just talk to him about it? Kaya's also worried about me sometimes, but he doesn't ever criticize me. You're right, but our relationship is much better than these guys. 
Uh, well, our situation is a little different. Really? How so? We've been through this kind of thing before. If we didn't warn Hado, then he wouldn't take it seriously and something would eventually happen. As his brothers, we have to help him. But it doesn't look like you're helping. Huh? Maybe Klee doesn't understand everything. But my mommy told me that you help someone to make them feel happy, not to make yourself happy. Hado sure doesn't look very happy. Why don't you ask him what he needs? Hmm. Klee's right, you know. You three need to open up and talk things through. You are brothers, after all. <sighs> I, um... Ahem. <clears throat> I've always cared a lot about you, Hado. Just like when we were back in the desert. You suddenly passed out, and Jeremy and I started arguing. Eventually, all three of us ended up in this domain. I'm just worried that something similar could happen again. If you were to pass out and with nobody around to help you... <sighs> I know. But this domain is nowhere near as dangerous as the desert. I was thinking that if I could handle these problems myself, then you two wouldn't have to argue about anything. If it weren't for my poor health and lack of energy all the time, then I wouldn't have always been such a burden on you two. No need to feel guilty, Hado. This was our choice. The three of us love adventuring. No one is a burden on anyone. Isn't that why we came up with the idea for this area? I would do the thinking, Ferdinand would use his muscle, and you would... Draw the blueprints and build tracks. It'll be a safe way to see all kinds of amazing scenery. Yes, that was the plan. <laughs> see? Doesn't it feel better just to get along? Hey, what are you trying to say? You make it sound like I've only been trying to talk myself up. The choo-choo cart is great, Ferdinand. Really? You know, Klee, having the car zip along the tracks was my idea. Yeah, what an amazing idea! You're so smart! Hey, Klee, do you want to ride even more fun carts? Yay! Let's ride more! Looks like all three of them are trying to win Klee's approval now. Klee hasn't realized it yet, but her innocent, childlike nature is very powerful. It can inspire and even help heal others. Hey, everyone. Please come with me. We need to get the Hydro Eidolon in the cart to help us. Good. Torrential Twister is ready to run now. Let's go to the station at the start of the track. Hado and I have double-checked everything. It's all operating safely. You can go for a ride now. Hold on a sec. Before we say goodbye, I have something I'd like to give you all. It's a rock climbing rope. We used it on our adventures to climb mountains and traverse many places. Huh? But doesn't it mean a lot to you? Are you sure you want to give it to us? 
Yes, of course. Please take it. Thanks to Klee and everyone else's help, we realize that there's a special bond that keeps us together. Even though it's invisible, it's even more important than rope. We can always hold on to it through tough situations. Huh? I helped? <laughs> yes, Klee. You are a big help. Even bigger than that huge thing in the middle of this place? Yes, much bigger. Wow, that's huge! I'm so happy. By the way, have you ever seen anything like the choo-choo cart in the outside world? Nope. Today was the first time I rode anything like it. Is that so? <coughs> I guess I'm not surprised. Seems you won't find Torrential Twister anywhere else. Be sure to come back and ride the choo-choo carts again while you still have the chance. Yep, I will. Thanks again. I have a feeling we'll get along much better now that we've learned to open up to each other. I suppose some things are simpler than they appear. The real problem all along was actually us. Hey, imagine if we could build our tracks all over the world. Traveling would be so much easier. <coughs> be sure to come back and visit Torrential Twister again. I hope you enjoyed it. There's nothing wrong with reaping a reward every now and then. That's so much fun! Klee can fly across the sky like a real mage now! Uh, guess that sort of makes sense. Wait, but if being able to fly makes you a mage, what does that make Kaya, since he's here too? Nothing! Kaya's just the master thief! Paimon's mind. <laughs> Sorry to bother our young mage, but there's something a master thief would like to report. Do you still remember our mission? Uh-oh. I was having so much fun that I almost forgot. We're supposed to be helping Adia look for the missing components. But don't worry. I've already got one. You mean you snatched it when we weren't looking? <laughs> 
I didn't have to go that far. In fact, the component we were searching for was actually that orange rope. If anything, you could say it came right into our hands at the right time. Let's head back and give it to Adia. Aw, do we really have to go? <sighs> okay. Even though I want to keep playing, I know Adia is really important. That's our wise mage. <sighs> Don't worry. Tonight, you'll be able to see stars in the water and watch fish dance in the sky. Uh, seems Kokomi's out of it after that ride. Her face is completely blank and her lip was trembling while she was speaking. <sighs> Maybe we should have a rest for a while. Uh, huh? I thought I was keeping my composure pretty well. Don't worry, my mind is always spinning. I'm used to this. We should head back to Idea. How about we hold hands, Miss General? Klee will give you energy. Uh huh. After holding Klee's hand, the stars in the sky and the fish in the water have all disappeared. I must have been seeing things from riding the cart. <sighs> hmm? What are you smiling about, Kokomi? Uh huh. Oh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> nothing. Nothing at all. have to wait till tomorrow. I'm a little tired now. Hmm. Seems she had a little too much fun and now she's about to crash. <laughs> I think it's time for a rest. Good idea. I think we could all use some downtime. Thanks for giving me some energy, Klee. Then we'll see you later. It sounds like our young mage enjoyed herself. I'm so happy that she had a good time. So, back to the missing component. Did you bring it? You bet! Kaya said that the missing component was this orange climbing rope. Ah, it just occurred to me that you probably ran into the three brothers while you were in the canyon. If I remember correctly, the two eldest brothers were taking their sickly younger brother on adventures when they ran into a sandstorm and ended up here. They were all arguing with one another when they first arrived, but it wasn't long before they broke down and were huddled together in tears. Uh, they sure must have a lot of energy to keep up their bickering and adventuring every day. I'm a little worried about them, yet quite envious of all that energy. <laughs> You almost sound as if you're reminiscing about old friends, Idia. Yes, I've known them for quite some time after all. But I seldom go to that area. You can hold on to the rope for now, Traveler. I have no use for it until we have the other components. By the way, Yula and Kale have also returned, but I'm afraid they weren't able to make much headway. They mentioned that they would like to head to the jungle north of here, once you have all rested up. Now that I've told you everything, I'll go rest. Uh, I mean, I'll go and check on the situation in the remaining two areas. Do you need me to accompany you? Oh, uh, no, it's all right. You've already accomplished a lot today. You should rest up.
Did you rest well? Yep, this is a comfortable place to rest. I guess that's one thing here that's better than the desert. But other than that, there's not much going for this place. Saying things like that isn't going to help, Adia. But it's the truth. The desert is full of terrible memories for me. Being there was like... Yeah, like wading through thick mud. That's a weird way to put it. Hmm. Actually, if you hadn't mentioned it, Paimon would have already forgotten that this domain is in the desert. I know what you mean. The air here isn't at all like the desert. It's very humid. Almost as if we're in the rainforest. It's a very familiar feeling for me. <sighs> Everyone looks well rested. If you're ready, we can start making our way to the jungle north of here. Good luck, everyone. I'll be rooting for you. Hold on. I said we, didn't I? No need to say goodbye, because you're coming too. Huh? But wait, I, I'm, I'm just the mascot! You can't back out this time, Adia. The manager of the fairgrounds is waiting to see you. She said Adia is the only person who could help. Yes, Kale and I discovered a fairgrounds in the forest. The person in charge of it seems to be a Spotamod scholar. A scholar? But what's she doing there? Researching the forest ley lines? Oh, I wish there were ley lines here that I could ever study. Anyway, I know who you're talking about. I'd better come along then. Next on the agenda... Healthy body, healthy mind.
There's nothing wrong with reaping a reward every now and then. Finally, someone has arrived. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mimuna. We've brought a deal with us. Thank you, Kale. It's been quite some time since I've seen you, Idia. To be honest, I didn't think you'd actually show up. If anything, I thought you'd be curled up somewhere crying alone. Hey, you shouldn't be saying things like that. Doesn't seem to be the first time Paimon's heard someone say that about Adia, though. You wanna see me cry? Fine! I'll stop crying right here! Huh? No, please don't! Alright, alright, I shouldn't have said that. Now, who are these two? And Paimon is Paimon! They're reliable helpers. Lucky for you that I found them. You'd better be more careful about how you speak to them, okay? Of course. Good to meet you. You may call me Maymuna. For the sake of time, we should forego the usual pleasantries. Please follow me. on the agenda? Wow! Look at that huge tent! Amazing, isn't it? I helped make it. What fun would a fairground be without a tent, right? Really? What is it, Kale? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should tell you. I'm afraid it might dampen the mood. <laughs> That's not important. Please, just speak your mind. Uh, well... There are lots of vendor booths set up here, but there's no one running them. In fact, there's no one at this fair at all. <laughs> It looks pretty deserted. The truth is, this used to be an exciting and bustling place. But just a few days ago, something happened, and it seemed like... Like the world was suddenly flipped upside down? Yes, exactly. Something fell from the central hub into the tent and knocked down the crystal light that was hanging at the top. Oh, the crystal light. Mm-hmm. I remember a certain someone said that we should have beautiful lights to celebrate at a fair, and made us that crystal light. But once the light fell, the tent became a complete mess and the Hydro Eidolans were trapped inside. Just when I was at my wit's end, a man from the Lawrence clan came and offered his assistance. Wait, he offered to help you? Yes, and he refused to listen to any of my warnings. He just walks straight into the tent, and then... Yes? And then? Yeah! Don't leave us hanging here! What happened? And that's it. He became trapped inside along with the Hydro Eidolans. Oh no! We have to do something! We can't just leave him there, Maimuna! I know, but the situation inside might be more difficult than you think. You should mentally prepare yourselves. <laughs> Just talking about it is a waste of time. 
Since we're already here, let's go and scout out the situation ourselves. <sighs> All right. This way, please. There used to be a large stage inside, but after everything got shaken up, it seems the very nature of the entire place was altered. The lamps and crystal light that were hanging above have all fallen down, which makes repairs near impossible. Wait, so you mean it's difficult to move around in there? Yes, mainly because of the lights. Do any of you have experience being on stage? Once the stage lights turn on, everyone's attention is focused on you. I can't stand that feeling. Having everyone's attention focus solely on me would just make me feel terrible. Me too! I'm no good at speaking in front of people. And then to have everyone staring at you? Oh, just the thought of it makes me shudder. Sounds like you have some things you haven't been able to let go of yet. <sighs> Please don't laugh. I'm trying my best to change that, but... There are still some things I can't overcome. Like when there's a lot of people around, or when people are staring at me. No, there's nothing funny about that. And you know what? It's not a bad thing to care when other people are looking. That's my opinion anyway. Think about it. Only people who have high standards for themselves would worry about failing to meet others' expectations. You have many good qualities, Kale. I bet if you had to learn dance since childhood like myself, then you'd be an even better dancer than me. No, no way! <laughs> that would be impossible. I can relate. I know exactly how she feels. Maybe we should find a time for you to learn with me. And one day, you will become an outstanding dancer too. By that time, you'll be so focused on performing your beautiful moves that you'll no longer worry about an audience watching you. Passionate about this that she's practically glowing now. Really? You do that? You wouldn't think I look stupid and secretly laugh at me, would you? <laughs> you really think I'm that kind of person? Fine. Vengeance will be mine. Oh, no! Of course not. O all right. Please teach me. Seems there's no need for me to warn you again. Anyway, you just need to open the curtain and you'll be able to see the stage. this looks like we need to raise the platform underneath the crystal light if i remember correctly the stage controls should be somewhere around here We have to use the colorful lens to make the light change colors. One way of shining new light on the problem. Hey, Maymuna? Do you happen to know someone named Sino? No, never heard that name before. Why do you ask? Who 
Oh, never mind then. I'm always just thinking you two would have a lot in common. <clears throat> Back to the situation at hand. We should probably head into the passageway that opened now. Hello? Is anyone here? If you can hear me, please help! Lessig Lawrence? Who are you? Who has the audacity to utter my full name? Uh, you sure don't look like you're in any condition to be talking like that. Yep, he's a member of the Lawrence clan, all right. Even though he's hanging on by a thread, he still insists on clinging to meaningless etiquette. You. What are you doing here? Huh. Have you come here to mock me, Eula? If you would just think for a moment, it should be pretty obvious why we are here. Yet, now you're intentionally trying to provoke me? Of course, you don't have to accept my help. After all, aristocrats are naturally superior and need no help from others. Yes, thanks for the reminder. I don't need help from the likes of you. I don't think he really needs it, Eula. His tone was harsh, but he keeps glancing at you from the corner of his eyes. It's my opinion as the healer that he needs help. Okay. <laughs> he's been trapped for so long that it seems he's forgotten how to hold a decent conversation. <laughs> how ridiculous. Let's go. We'll leave the stage to this person who'd rather save face than save his own life. Hey, no, no, wait! Uh, halt! You cannot just leave me here. We're both of the Lawrence bloodline, after all. Helping me when necessary certainly won't tarnish your prestige. If anything, my embarrassing predicament will be overshadowed by your virtuous deed. We must uphold the prestige and dignity of the family. This is the best reason you could come up with? You think tacking on the word family will be enough to talk me into helping you? You should be ashamed for your careless actions. It's because of you that we all had to come here. I... Uh... Seems everyone in the Lawrence clan is this way. They'll do anything to save face. All right, all right. Looks like it's time for the mascot to step in. Here you go. One for Eula, and one for Lessig. What is this? Candy? Uh, thanks. Oh, the smell. It's just like the aroma I smell coming from the lens. Yes, that's right. Enjoying something sweet always lightens the mood. Oh, thank you, Miss Mascot. I certainly do feel much better now. <laughs> so he's willing to thank someone else, but not me. Eula has been worrying about you the past few days, and asked me several times regarding how to find you. But now that you two have been reunited, I won't have to keep answering her questions anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Let me clarify one thing. I don't care what happens to him. If you're going to keep saying nonsense like this, then... Eula will never admit that she actually cares about him. Yeah, you're probably right. If you're going to keep saying nonsense like this, then... Uh, then at least give me another piece of candy. Hmm? Oh, sure, sure. I, I still have more. Sorry, I admit my mistake. I know I've caused heaps of trouble for all of you. <laughs> Why couldn't you have just said that earlier? I'm back. Oh? Have you already finished catching up? Why are you all looking at me? Oh, uh, nothing. Don't mind us. All right. Then let's clean things up here and keep working our way toward getting the crystal light fixed. Ah, there's no need to push yourself in your condition, Lessig. I'll take him and find some place for him to rest. I happen to be a little tired myself. All right. I'll leave my cousin to you then.
You'd better rest up and regain your strength before we settle things, Lessig. Now, let's see if there's any way to keep raising the platform higher. We probably will need to find a mechanism that's like a lamp. Strange. Is that really the Lessig that I know? You shouldn't always judge people based on the way you knew them before. People change, and people can always make different choices. Hmm. Oh, look! There's a water droplet over there! Ah, a Hydro Idolin! It must have been trapped in the curtain, but at least it seems to be okay. Magical tent, after all. The inside is much larger than it appears from the outside. Haven't you heard stories with this sort of thing before? Oh, another path has appeared! This should be the last level! Yes, don't worry. We're almost to the top of the tent. The last thing we need to do is raise the crystal light to the very top of the tent. After the stage collapsed, I realized that having it raised only halfway makes it look a lot like the stage at the Grand Bazaar. Have any of you visited the Grand Bazaar before? No, I haven't. I have. I've gone there a few times with Master Tainari. The place is bustling with all kinds of vendors. And if you're lucky, you can see Nilu perform her dance. Oh, a dance from Sumeru? <laughs> I'd like to see that myself. Hmm. If only it were on the way back, then we could stop there. It doesn't matter if it's on the way or not. I would be happy to take you whenever you have time, Eula. Great. I'll take you up on that offer. Yeah! Hmm. Now that Paimon thinks about it, we've already been there more times than Paimon can remember. Really? My father used to help with festivities at the Grand Bazaar and would always give me candy during the events. I was just a kid and didn't understand anything. I was happy as long as he gave me some candy. To me, fairs and festivals were the best things ever. I always thought my father was amazing and wanted to be just like him when I grew up. But aren't you a scholar in the academia, Mimuna? As far as I know, scholars seldom could spend time doing anything but research. I doubt you could have time to assist your father in preparing festivities. Yeah, seems you read me like a book. When I had the choice between becoming who I wanted to be and who my parents wanted me to be, I ended up choosing the latter. But I was never happy about it. Huh. That's almost the exact opposite of you situation. You must have already realized that. Why else would you set up all the booths here and make this place like a fairgrounds? Yes, but I'm still not as happy as I imagined I would be. I realized that attending a fair and running a fair are two completely different things. The main reason my childhood was so fun and carefree is because my family worked hard. But my father knew how difficult and tiring running a fair could be, so he wanted to push me towards academics. <sighs> but in the end, I didn't do well in either. I gave up on myself and resorted to investigating ley lines in the desert. Some things happened, and then I accidentally ended up here. I finally had a chance to make my wish of running a fair come true. But after seeing everything come crashing down, 
I feel like I've lost the strength to go on. It's not as bad as you make it out to be, Maimuna. No need to feel so down. You have the courage to change, and you've been actively guiding us on this journey. Someone who's given up on themselves could never do these things. Oh, Kale. I understand my situation better than anyone. You don't need to try to comfort me. It's not that I'm trying to comfort you. It's just that people sometimes don't realize that their actions speak louder than words. Believe me, this is something that I learned from my time together with Eula. Oh, what are you trying to say? Oh, uh, <laughs> nothing. <clears throat> now, let's get that crystal light fixed. All right. Yes, the lens is made of materials that are easily melted by light. Is it me, or do I smell something sweet here? If we're going to raise the crystal light, then we need to open the top of the tent. about myself. I don't know if I should be worried for him or <laughs> happy for her. Uh, the shadow. It's massive. Uh, wait. Shadow just now. It's... Uh... uh <laughs> it seems he still might need a little more time to recover. Tell me, did everything go well for you all? Of course. With a team like the Traveler, Paimon, Kale, and Eula, they're at least 40 times more reliable than you ever were. Only 40 times more reliable? That means I'm still pretty good then. <sighs> I guess it's impossible to feel like you've lost once you've already given up. I'm a little concerned about how comfortable you are with that. Huh? What has happened? How did I get outside of the tent? <sighs> That's right. I remember meeting Eula, and then... Uh, and then... Uh, my head. 
Oh, you're awake now. Uh, don't worry. Th that's just a side effect of your treatment, Lessig. I'm afraid I still feel a little disoriented. Lessig Lawrence? Oh, it's you, Eula. All right, all right, I'll do it. I'll come back to Mondstadt with you and abandon my wild efforts to restore the Lawrence clan. Interesting. Now you want to talk. Seems like you've had a change of heart. In that case, maybe you'll be able to explain everything in detail for us now. I... Uh, I admit it, yes. I came here in hopes of finding a way to restore the Lawrence clan to its former glory. But it was a long journey, and I didn't always know the way. I passed through Liyue and Sumeru. There was even a time when I lost my wallet and had to live in the wild. But the peculiar thing is, I realized that nobody knew me out there. And not a single person even cared about the Lawrence clan. You and I are like glass pawns that were raised in shackles. We were taught to act like nobles, but outside the walls of our home, the people of Mondstadt despised us. Such pompous, hateful, and stubborn teaching. It all culminated to making us cling to the old aristocratic dogma in an attempt to maintain our pride. It's like a never-ending game of tug-of-war. But it is meaningless. You understand. Or I should say, you have already long understood. But I'm afraid that I have only just realized this. Hmm. Paimon sort of understands what Lessig is saying. Everything he said is true. Your family is probably unaware that you've already changed how you see things. Yes. This has all happened recently. After coming to this domain, I realized the Mondstadt that I want is one where not everyone fears me. All that I and many other members of the Lawrence clan long for is a place where we can live peacefully with others. Lessig, both you and I never had anything to do with the glory of the Lawrence clan. That is all in the past. We are just ordinary people. <sighs> I originally planned on returning to Mondstadt after taking care of things here. I never thought you would come here. I was completely shocked, which is why I reacted like I did. I'm sorry. See, people can always make different choices, and it seems that Lassik has also chosen to become someone he truly wants to be. <clears throat> yes, about that. I'm afraid I haven't quite found my own purpose in life yet. That's all right. Being able to clearly choose between becoming who you want to be and who your parents wanted you to be is already a step in the right direction. How to find true happiness is probably one of the most difficult research topics of all. I have a suggestion for you, Lessig. Why don't you return to Mondstadt and tell your parents what you just told us? <laughs> They'll probably try to tear me limb from limb. But... What about you? Did you ever tell your family about what you think? This is something that I've been thinking about, too. Perhaps the two of us can sit down with the rest of the clan and discuss it with them. The Lawrence clan is just like this stage. It was once home to glorious performances, but those days are now long gone. And it is time for the stage to be updated. She's so solid and tough, but also clear and open. Like an ice cube. Is that why she's able to dance anytime and anywhere she wishes? Um, are you all done talking now? Yes, I think so. By the way, that is for you. Please take it. I found it on Lessig earlier. Oh, it's one of the missing components! Wait, so you had it all this time? Why didn't you give it to me earlier? Well, you... Didn't ask. All right, I admit it. I forgot about it. <laughs> okay, we'll let the traveler hold on to it for now. Hmm? Wait, this looks like... It looks pretty familiar. Have we seen one of these before? Ah, right! I also bought 
a similar box at the last festival. Yes, people often use this kind of box for candy at festivals. This was one of the materials originally used to create the tent. But now that the tent has been repaired, we no longer need it. Eating the candy from the box as an adult will never be as delicious as it was when you were a kid. But if you really think about it, there are way more things you can eat as an adult. Ah, so when it comes down to it, eating candy is sort of like life. It's just another choice. Hmm. So, as of now, we've already collected three of the missing components. Only one more to go! I'm sorry that repairing the tent took so much of everyone's time. You should all head back and have a rest. I'll lead the way.